and the dog's deed is done. What can I say? They were the best. They really stood out. They put it all together when it counts, and that's what the sport's all about. What a routine. And that just may do it for Georgia here tonight. Wow. The Jim Dodd Show is brought to you by Melwood Springs. Melwood Springs, from the Blue Ridge Mountains of North Georgia. Hi, I'm Suzanne Yachlin, and welcome to the Jim Dodd Show. As always, with me today is Associate Head Coach Jay Clark, and as you know, he'll be the head coach of the Jim Dogs next year. Uh, Jay has really had a tremendous amount of experience this last week, along with me, side by side, trying to get our team over this three competitions in a row uh, within an eight-day period battle, and it, it has been a battle culminating with our meet this past weekend against University of Alabama, and Jay really has taken on a great leadership role preparing the team for this competition because, as always, there's no team we'd rather beat than University of Alabama. That is true, and it was a fantastic meet and a great environment, particularly in light of the fact that we had a meet on Monday, the fans really turned out on Friday night, which sometimes can be a little bit tricky because it's a little early when you're trying to get off work on Friday afternoon. But a great environment it was and just a, just a fantastic atmosphere. As we continue to try to build momentum, our fans seem to be doing the same along with us. And, and I really have to applaud Alabama in terms of the preparation that they had with their team. Uh, they had not yet scored a 196 points to total uh, prior to the meet with us, and they were definitely coming in as the underdog into Stegman Coliseum, so I'm sure that could be quite intimidating for some of their freshmen. Uh, but, you know, we, we knew that, there, that the fact that they hadn't scored that high was because that they had had a number of falls in their previous competitions, and so we knew they would be ready and at their best when they came to Athens, and they certainly started out the competition on the first two events uh, gung-ho, really with a lot of fight and determination to beat us. Let's take a look at the first two rotations. So here we are warming up for the Alabama meet, where we had 11 season highs. Uh, in this competition, Cassidy McComb on vault for us doing Yurchenko one and a half for the first time in competition. You can see her hop there to the right. That's as a re result of the direction off the table. If you watch, she begins to cheat the turn just a bit. Drops that shoulder down and hops off to the right. Marcia Newby up on vault for us. She had a lot of adrenaline on this. This is a big vault. It's probably one of the better vaults she had done. She just had not done it uh, quite that big in competition yet this year and a little unsure of the landing there and again landings are things that have got to start coming together for us as we get further down deeper into the season Cassie Price over on bars for the University of Alabama big Hindorf release move right there very nicely done Cassie's from Orlando Metro Gymnastics down in Florida that's a bail to handstand for her second D release a little short there on that handstand. You can see the legs come apart through the bottom. That is a deduction on her Giants. Double layout with a small hop there, and she goes 9.875. Very good bar routine. Courtney Kupetz back on vault for us. Big hop there on the landing, and typically Courtney's got radar on that landing. She normally lands that thing very, very cleanly. But again, tonight as a whole, we don't seem to be landing on vault the way we'd like to be. We warmed up very, very well and, and we're expecting better landings on that event. I think the adrenaline kind of got to them a little bit and things just, the energy uh, sort of took over. So we go over to bars now, try to get settled down and regain the lead here. This is Kat Ding, a freshman from Reno, Nevada. <clears throat> Only her second time in competition for us. She does a giant Fultacaccia, very nicely done. Handstand was up. Pack Salto for her second D release move. Cat's got a very clean line on the uneven bars. That handstand could have been up a little bit more. And a double layout dismount here. The legs get a little bit loose on the second flip, and she takes that step on the landing and goes 9.8. She's capable of doing more than that. Marcia Newby locking out that first handstand. That's the way you want to see a handstand done. You see a little bit of leg separation as she comes back on the chapash. And then the only other deduction I see is right here, slightly bent elbows. Big Tkachev. This is clearly the best routine so far that Marcia's done in competition. Two giants and a double layout, which she sticks almost. There is a step there. 9.875 is her score. Very solid routine from Marcia. 
Gina Nuccio. That mount right there is brand new for her, and she's really only done it for a day since she sprained her ankle. So a little bit small on the mount. Legs come apart again on the ginger. She has a tendency to do that when she feels like it's coming in close to the bar. She gets loose with those legs. She's got to improve that. Last handstand a little bit short. Solid dismount, 9.875. Back over on vault for Alabama, Megan Mashburn. It was a walk-on from South Carolina. Pretty solid vault on the landing there. It's a handspring front pike half, but a big hop. She goes 9.675. Grace Taylor back over on bars for us. Front stall to work there, very nice. Grace's routine is its the uniqueness of her routine that, that uh, really kind of blows everybody away because she has a variety of skills that you just don't see very often. That Coleman each there was in just a little bit. We'd like that to get a, a little bit more away from the bar as she catches for amplitude. And a step there on that landing as well, 9.875. So the landings are biting us all night so far on both of the first two events. Rick, Ricky Levegern on vault. So the Yurchenko one and a half, but a big step forward, 9.85. And if you're stepping on vault, you're usually not going to get much more than that. Tiffany Tolne back on bars for us. Tiffany's trademark handstand work, as usual, is up. Every one of her handstands gets to vertical. I'd like to see her be a little tighter with her body on that bail to handstand. Not too bad. Nice giant full. Double front, very clean, but just that step there on the landing, and she goes 9.9. .9. Morgan Dennis back on vault. For Alabama, Morgan's a very powerful athlete. You see the size of that ball. It's the biggest ball of the night from, from either team, but also a very large deduction on the, on the landing, 9.85. And then Courtney rounds it out for us on bars. Great handstand work here. And this is the thing. With, if Courtney hits her handstands nine times out of ten, it's going to be very close to pushing that ten in terms of a score because that is really the only place where she has any level of inconsistency. She nails the landing and we knew it when we saw it. Should have been a 10. We thought Monday's was a 10 also. It went 9.975 so it's nice for Courtney to finally get that 10 which she does on this rotation. So after two rotations we have a 98.5 to Alabama's 98.35 and we've regained the lead headed over the balance beam. The Jim Dodd Show is brought to you by Melwood Springs. Melwood Springs from the Blue Ridge Mountains of North Georgia. By GeorgiaDogs.com. GeorgiaDogs.com, the official website of the Georgia Bulldogs. By Brown Arrowhead Clinic. Arrowhead Clinic, Georgia's largest spinal health care organization. By Athens Regional Medical Center. At Athens Regional, we have a specialty. You. By Alpha Factor. Alpha Factor, the official gymnastics apparel worn by the Gym Dogs. By the Georgia Club. The Georgia Club, a community of neighborhoods in Bulldog Country. By Phil Hughes Honda. Phil Hughes, the official Honda of the Georgia Gym Dogs. And brought to you by John Bull's Stores in the Bahamas. John Bull, the shopping mecca of the Caribbean. Ask Suzanne, brought to you by GeorgiaDogs.com. And this week's question is... Now that you've finished the three competitions in a row, what will your practice schedule be like? And the answer is, finally, we are back to a normal practice schedule of Monday, Tuesday, and Thursday. We head out Thursday night for NC State. That's Ask Suzanne, brought to you by GeorgiaDogs.com. Welcome back. Well, after two rotations, we've got the lead back. After a little bit of a uh, slow start on vault, we really blew it up well on, on bars and were able to take back the lead that we didn't have after the first rotation. So we're ahead by about a tenth and a half, Suzanne, and we learned a valuable lesson on Monday against Utah that we've really got to make sure we maintain our focus and keep that momentum going on balance beam. Absolutely. We did blow it up on bars. I want to go uh, a little further and just acknowledge the great routines from our two freshmen, Kat Ding in the leadoff position and Gina Nuccio, which are routines you've already seen. Just It's really nice to see them just be able to perform at that high level. Uh, and our whole bar, bar lineup was just unbelievable. Except for the lack of sticking dismounts, bars looked just incredible as a credit to Jay as our bar coach. And vaulting was adrenaline and new vaults and a lot of reasons. But now that we head to balance beam, we've really got to get that focus back because 
We struggled against Utah, as Jay said, and you know, more for the development of the team than anything else and for our confidence. We need to be able to go out there and hit five really, really solid beam routines and, and so we can get back on track on that event. Let's see what happens. So Hillary Morrow, to get us going on balance beam here, Paige Burns let us off and stayed on the equipment. It was a pretty good routine, but this is the one we really need to have right here. Flip flop layout for a series, front aerial, very solid, nothing wrong so far. Punch front, slight balance check right there. But Hillary's punch front is done as well as anybody I've ever seen in terms of her extension when she lands. She does a switch side there, and sometimes her feet get a little bit flexed, but there they look pretty good. And a little step there on the dismount, and Hillary starts us off there with a 9.825. Over on floor, Caitlin Sullivan. Whoa, big step. Almost goes out of bounds there. A two and a half in the middle. Pretty clean. And then she finishes up with a front handspring, front layout, front full, knees bent, and a step there on the landing, and she goes 9.75. Cassidy McCollum, there's a balance check there, and it seems like out of nowhere that came because she was on the beam squarely and then suddenly just loses her balance. Punch front, pretty good. A little bit of a lunge forward there. Could have been a small deduction. Good lead combination there, the tuck full. And then finishes with her double full dismount. A little hop on the landing and another 9.825. Solid scores so far. Nothing spectacular to this point. Tiffany Tolnay up next on beam. Switch side, huge as usual. Tiffany's amplitude on beam is fantastic. Flip-flop layout for her series. A switch leap before the straddle jump. The back leg could probably get up a little bit. There's not really a 180 split there. Punch front here, and this has been a problem a little bit consistency-wise. She does, can't do a lot of numbers on that skill because of her foot, but a very solid routine, and she gets us up to a 9.85 there. Grace Taylor mounting with the Silavash dismount. One arm flip flop, the back pike. Grace works the beam, as we've talked so many times on this show about how fluid she works the beam. She works the beam as well as anybody we've ever seen. That's why she's the defending national champion. Showing off her flexibility there to the front aerial. Solid. All the way through this. I've not seen a deduction yet. Don't know where the deduction is. Sticks to dismount 9.975. I'd, like I'd like to know where that half tenth came from because that was a fantastic routine that Grace did. Courtney Kupetz finishing out our beam lineup. Punch front, very solid. See Courtney incorporate a little bit of her floor dance in there, in her routine. Very similar style. The hitch kick. The switch side. Nice scale there, again showing flexibility. You look for a variety of skills on this event. You want to see a little bit of everything, and Courtney certainly shows you that. She has the difficult three element tumble series. She has another D level. Salto, when she does the punch front, she shows her flexibility here. She has leaps that have great amplitude. Another D Salto with a gainer layout and then a gainer full, which is a C off the side of the beam, which she sticks and gets a tan the second one of the night. That's the first time that's happened since 2004 when Chelsea Bird did it. So after three rotations, we are at a 147.975 to Alabama's 147.025 with a fairly comfortable lead going into the floor exercise. Hello, my name's Olivia, and Paige, what is your favorite season? Thanks for the question, Olivia. I would have to say that my favorite season as a gym dog was probably either freshman year or senior year, because we're going to end it with a bang. Hi, my name's Frank Chanley, and my favorite thing about the gym dogs is the meat. Although it's a team support, it's always fun to watch the individual girls performing. And the one when they hit it is just wonderful to watch. And I really enjoy that part of seeing the girls accomplish 
what they worked on all year. Welcome back. Well, that was a great rotation on Balance Beam for Georgia, uh, starting right out at the very beginning with Hillary Morrow's super routine and Cassie McComb fighting to stay on. Uh, Tiffany had a wobble here or there, but, you know, she does have a little bit of a broken, she has a broken foot right now on the Balance Beam and, and, and struggles with that front tuck, that punch front tuck. But overall, an incredible set on Beam, finishing, of course, with Grace Taylor and Courtney Coupets. Wow, that's the kind of momentum you want headed over to floor. Well, more than anything, I think you're seeing some of our upperclassmen begin to get really comfortable. It looks like they're starting to hit their stride a little bit, and certainly Courtney seems to be finally hitting her stride. And Tiffany's situation is she doesn't get to train an awful lot. So the numbers that we do are, uh, primarily are in competition. So, it, you know, she's just now getting, getting her juices flowing, so to speak, on a couple of events. And uh, it was a fantastic way to finish out that event. That's exactly the way you want to compete balance beam, as you said. And it's nice to have uh, somebody anchoring beam the way Courtney seems to be able to do it right now. So we're headed to floor, and we've really got to finish out the meet. And again, you don't want those lapses uh, as you, you finish out a meet. We do have a comfortable lead right now, right. but but it's always important to make sure that we finish out the meet because those are lessons that we have to learn as we go throughout the season. So let's take a look at the floor highlights against Alabama. See the student section beginning to get revved up as they always do when we get over to floor. Revved up's a good term as Abby Stack gets us started off with her Speed Racer themed routine. That's a beautiful triple fold. Abby gets it all the way around. You see so many people do triple folds that they don't quite square and they kind of scoot their feet around to finish it. Abby gets hers all the way around prior to landing. Double full punch front there in the middle, which is unique and done very well. Double pike. That was a little bit flat for Abby, but, but a very good routine to get us started with. And she goes 9.8. I think that score could have gone a little higher. Grace Taylor up next. Look at these landings, folks. Whip through the double pike, incredibly clean landing there, and also right here on the double tuck, just sticks the landing. It's not even really a lunge that she's doing. Last pass is the two and a half. That right there, that step would be the only deduction that you could possibly see in her tumbling, and it might have been a half a ten, and and she goes nine point eight seven five. Geraldin Stack Eaton, a former teammate of our freshman Amber Trainey. Over on Beam from Parkettes. There's a flip flop layout for a series. Comes back with a front aerial to a sheep jump combination. Very nicely done. Excellent routine for Geraldine, and she goes 9.9. .9. A little bit weak on the dismount doing a round with one and a half, but a 9.9 .9 nonetheless. Courtney Coupettes on floor. Arabian double front. Thought she tucked that into herself just a bit, but. Ended up pulling out a pretty clean landing there. Whip half to Rudy to the Shushanova. We get two tenths of combination bonus there plus the D. There's another tenth. And then the last pass, as always, is a double pike. Another D and an excellent routine. 9.95 just misses the third ten of the night. It very easily could have been another ten. Morgan Dennis on balance beam. For Alabama and, Al and Alabama's really knocking it out to their credit they're doing a good job on the balance beam knowing that they're pretty much out of the meat unless something catastrophic happens on floor with us they're doing a very good job over there hitting the balance beam you see a switch leap the straddle jump again the splits could be bigger on those leaps and then her legs are apart on a double tuck dismount never really controls the landing and goes 9.85 Arabian tug double from Tiffany. She steps back a little bit on that. You can see she was a little bit flat backed on that two and a half punch front that got a little got a little away from her, got a little crooked. And again, Tiffany's issues deal primarily with the fact she just has not been able to train a lot of numbers and her competition really is her training. So as we go through, you'll see her get more consistent. She finished there with a strong double pike, and we round out the evening with a 197.175 to Alabama's 196.275, and potentially this night could have been close to a 198. Routine of the Week, brought to you by Athens Regional Medical Center, and this week's Routine of the Week is Courtney Coupettes in the all-around as she scores the fourth highest total in the history of Georgia gymnastics, scoring a 39.825. That's Courtney Coupettes for Routine of the Week, brought to you by Athens Regional Medical Center. Countdown to the NC2As brought to you by Melwood Springs. And Georgia reclaims the number one spot this week with an average of a 196.65.
Auburn is at number six. They are our next home opponent. And rounding out the top ten is LSU with six SEC teams in the top ten. That's Countdown to the NC2As brought to you by Melwood Springs. Well, there you have it. Another great meet. And we've come out of this juggernaut sort of three-meet, eight-day situation unscathed and, and really improved immensely from where we were when we started the season. And so now, Suzanne, we head into this next week with a little bit of a sense of normalcy in, in right. terms of getting some training time before we have to head off to Raleigh, North Carolina against uh, NC State, and we, we may get the opportunity to rest some people this week. You know, and people say, oh, my gosh, why do you have a schedule like that? And obviously now that it's over and we've won all three competitions and we've built on our score every single week, uh, you know, it's, it's easy now to say it was the right thing to do, and wow, our team has totally benefited from this really difficult schedule the last eight days, because uh, we have. And, and it's been tremendous. We've had back-to-back -back 197s. We've had perfect 10s. We've had almost every gymnast on our team improve from week to week on the events that they've been competing. So we, we are ready to go into the NC State for a competition against the Wolfpack. And we will be re resting Tiffany Tolney this weekend because of her foot problems and hopefully get some more freshmen in the, into action. And, uh, you know, our goal is to hit 24 routines and continue to build. We'll see you next week with the results of NC State versus the Gym Dogs. The Gym Dog Show has been brought to you by Melwood Springs. Melwood Springs from the Blue Ridge Mountains of North Georgia. By GeorgiaDogs.com. GeorgiaDogs.com, the official website of the Georgia Bulldogs. By Brown Arrowhead Clinic. Arrowhead Clinic, Georgia's largest spinal health care organization. By Athens Regional Medical Center. At Athens Regional, we have a specialty. You. By Alpha Factor. Alpha Factor, the official gymnastics apparel worn by the gym dogs. By the Georgia Club. The Georgia Club, a community of neighborhoods in Bulldog Country. By Phil Hughes Honda. Phil Hughes, the official Honda of the Georgia Gym Dogs. And brought to you by John Bull's Stores in the Bahamas. John Bull, the shopping mecca of the Caribbean.